Hi PLM, thank you for this opportunity to be part of Ready Set Go 2023 as one of your guest speakers. So I come on behalf of Prospo and of course myself, Kuya Dev. So for today, I was requested to discuss my insights about building great resumes and doing well in interviews. So I hope this will be of value to you. But before I begin, I just want to discuss that I'm going a bit offbeat here in which I thought there's already a lot or a ton of content out there that discusses how to do well in interviews and how to build resumes. So if you want to learn more about that, you could just, you know, search on YouTube, LinkedIn, and uh, even TikTok, you know. So I decided to go a bit off track, you know. Try to build on top of those content, actually often or common, uh, being discussed in other avenues. So for this talk, I want to share what I observed and what I think through my experience in interviewing and not only as a job seeker, but also someone who's interviewed other people. So I want to share my insights and my experiences. Uh, some of these might be a bit uh, controversial, but nothing illegal. Uh, some of them might apply to you. Some of them don't. So I want you to exercise your good judgment on what actually applies to your particular situation. Okay? So before I begin, again, I just want to apologize because I couldn't be there uh, live. I, I wanted to, but uh, scheduling just couldn't make it possible. I'm currently actually, while you're watching this, April 30, I'm probably on another event. Again, thank you for uh, watching and... Uh, Let's start the, the talk. So, the title of my talk is Focus on What Matters, Impact-Driven Resumes and Interviews. So, this past few months, a uh, few weeks, few months, I've been doing a lot of interviews. We've been trying to get developers to, on our team. And uh, frankly, I now want, I, I want more people to be uh, impact-driven. You know? Because a lot of the people that, that I interview are focused on the skills. The skills matter, yeah, but especially in our particular case, in our team, we are looking for impact-driven individuals. So with that context, let me just introduce myself. <laughs> anyway, who am I? I am Rem Lampa. So I am a podcaster, a content creator. I run the Kuya Dev Tidbits podcast. It's available on Spotify and YouTube and other podcast platforms. So I currently also maintain a Facebook page and which has around 17,000 followers. And I have also other social media accounts with several uh, thousands of followers. So if you want to follow me, just uh, hit me up on kuyadev.com. There's links there and uh, my social media accounts. So my day job is actually a web developer. I am the JavaScript team leader at Prospo, one of your sponsors. I am actually a career shifter, having uh, almost a decade of experience in my previous in industry, which is electrical engineering, plus six years in uh, my current industry, which is web development. So combined around 16 years. I am also very active in the tech community here in the Philippines ever since I shifted careers. So I founded Tech Career Shifter Philippines, a community that helps people of all backgrounds get into tech. Not only career shifters, but also career starters like you or most of you when you graduate. I'm also one of the core team members of ReactJS Philippines and one of the co-founders and community managers of Free Code Camp Manila. But enough about me. Let's proceed with the uh, topic. Why focus on impact? Actually, what is impact, right? Like I said earlier, this is a very experience-driven insight in which with people getting more and more equivalent skills and credentials, having a great understanding of how to harness one's skills to create value is a superpower. So what 
do I mean by this? Us, like like for me, whenever whenever I recruit people, you know, I look at resumes. I see the same set of skills. Most probably, they have pretty similar skills because web development. It's uh, especially in our case, which is uh, on the JavaScript side, a lot of these skills overlap. You know, and most people have the same set of skills. Maybe they have different levels of mastery, but still, someone who knows React and another one who knows React also knows React, right? Yeah, I, I don't know if that makes sense. But across most people who are in the same um, industry would probably have the same set of skills. So for someone who is, you know, graduating, starting their career, we recruiters would look at your resume and see that, hey, you all graduated. You, ha- you all have college degrees. Okay, you graduated from, say, PLM at the top of your class. So that's what? 10%, maybe 10% of the whole graduating class. But that's just one school. How many schools do we have in the Philippines? How many schools do we have in the whole world? So pitting yourself against that and just relying on your skill set and what you did in school, you know, on your diploma, doesn't really make you stand out, doesn't really make you special. So you need to find ways for people to notice you, you know, to really distinguish yourself from the, from the pack. Not really make you, you know, that doesn't really mean that you're way better, but you will seem better or you will seem that you're a better fit for this company than other applicants. So everyone must develop the mindset of what can I bring to the table? So that's what impact is. You must have an understanding of how you can impact other people or help other people, help elevate other people, help elevate the company. So if you master that, if you uh, you develop that kind of mindset, it's going to be a huge superpower. So as we go along the slides, uh, I think uh, it's going to be uh, even more uh, clearer as we go along. So let's start with building impact-driven resumes. But let me just pose a question. Are resumes still relevant in 2023? Resumes have been around for decades now. So it's 2023. Everything's on the internet. We have apps. Are they really still relevant? So submitting resumes I think there are, there are studies for this, this. and uh, practically it makes sense, this first statement. Submitting resumes is the least effective way of applying for jobs. What do I mean by this? Everyone is doing it. No. Thousands of people, maybe no, hundreds, thousands of people are applying for the same job. And everyone is you know, trying to go through the same door. So everyone is submitting resumes. And from the thousands of resumes, the likelihood of you getting in is inversely proportional to the amount of people applying. And most people apply by submitting resumes. Just imagine that. If everyone is doing this, it's going to be pretty hard to get in because everyone's going well, thousands of people are trying to get into the company through that single door so that's going to be pretty hard number two that might make it seem like resumes aren't relevant in, the, in today's age is platforms like Prospo, Job Street, LinkedIn and even Facebook are providing easier ways of applying for jobs like for example I haven't really I just re- learned about this uh, recently. In LinkedIn, everything is just one click away. Yeah. Click, 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 and you apply to every uh, every company. In Prosper, we also do that. If your profile is already complete, you just click, 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 and you've already applied to what dozens of companies. 
So yeah, that's that's another reason. And third reason why I think Vesham may, may seem that they are not relevant in 2023 is they feel very archaic and updated. They just, you know, the practice is just very old, you know. This will be a pattern towards uh, throughout my whole talk, okay? I, everything will come in threes. Uh, I can discuss uh, why, but uh, let's just move on. Just expect that everything would be coming in threes. Okay. So, yeah, we're saying that they are, there are reasons that's, uh, that's making the resume irrelevant in 2023. But there are counterpoints. Firstly, and we have we can't do anything about this, most, if not all, companies still require them. Even in Prospel, when we invite people for interviews or when we recruit other talent, we still require them to submit resumes. It's just a fact. It's still a practice that's being done by most, if not all, companies. Secondly, the resume actually provides a brief summary of one's academic and work history. So think of it as a 30-second advertisement. Whenever a commercial comes up on TV or on YouTube, the purpose of that is to give you uh, a fast synopsis of what the product is or what it can do, right? It doesn't really tell you the detailed or the details of how great the product is. It just uh, tries to catch your attention so that hopefully you will purchase that product or avail of the services. So given that, the real purpose of a resume is to get interviews. The resume itself won't get you the job. It will just get you the interview. And the interview is actually the more important part of the application process. The resume just is just a key or just a you know a commercial that uh, applicants use to catch recruiters' attentions or employers' attention. So the third reason that makes the resume still relevant in 2023 is that some companies, not really here in the Philippines, I think, but uh, in other countries, this is very uh, this is standard practice already. In that, some companies have applicant tracking systems or what they call ATS that benefit from standardized resumes. So there's a particular format of resumes that human resources uh, would use and would require, so that when they get your resume, they just feed it in their ATS. And that automatically adds you to their database. And if that ATS has advanced capabilities, maybe do machine learning and everything. So given that, you know, uh, I think resumes are still relevant in 2023, for better or for worse. So knowing that, you know, what should I include? Or what you should we include in the resume? So again, this is a, a, a talk about creating impact or focusing on the impact. So the first thing that you should be adding to your resume is exhibiting how you could impact the organization. So I admit that's pretty hard to do, but you could you know, um, add there things that you've done that would would demonstrate how you have impacted others. Like, for example, you're a volunteer of oh, GDSC. You're a volunteer. So place there, not only that you're, for example, a secretary of GDSC, don't just place secretary of GDSC and be done with it. No add there what the actual impact you've contributed to the to the organization like i've organized uh events that helped 
dozens or if you have a concrete number, better, but dozens of students learn React or learn WordPress. You know, that's concrete numbers. The more concrete uh, you can go, the better. Now, especially now in uh, today's today's uh, job market, a lot of these entry level um, uh, jobs require years of experience, even though they say that's that it's uh, an entry level job. There's a hack to have that experience without actually having that experience. And that's building a portfolio. So this is the in the context of uh, software development, okay? Or maybe in uh, positions that we can create portfolio. Of course, there are jobs that that's not really possible, you know? But for in the context of software development, you know, IT, we can do this and that's you know that's very very special so you can build up build a portfolio in lieu of experience so create something that excites you and that really interests you and build a project around that like uh i i think i shared this in one of my tiktok videos i've had a friend i, I have a friend who did this that he he loves pokemon so he created a project around that. He gathered data from the Pokedex. It's, that, it's, it's what we call it, right? The Pokedex. And created visualizations around Pokemon and creating a data-driven platform. You know, And he used that as, as his portfolio for getting into data science. And he got into data, data science and is now working in uh, Europe. So imagine that. So another thing that you could do is um, make the information relevant to the company. Tailor your resume to that job description. You know, read the job description. It's pretty similar to uh, how you do search engine or optimization and digital marketing. You need to know how to um, use effective keywords. You know? Then match the description or the, the, the organization of your resume towards the job that you're applying for. So this would make your resume very uh, customized for each company. And uh, actually, that's good because a lot of companies will appreciate that. It means that you really are serious about applying to that company. Then iterate. Um, if ever I'm going to apply for a job now, I'll probably do this, you know, do A-B testing, you know, see what works and what doesn't. In each of my application, I will gather data. What resumes are effective and what aren't working the way I expect them to be. So yeah, iterate. And make it ATS ready. I'll discuss this uh, later. And lastly, um, over time, while you g gather uh, enough experience, replace your academic history. Of course, if you're a fresh graduate, you have no choice except if you're you have side gigs while you're uh, studying, or if you have uh, a lot of organizations, you could add that. But sans that, if you don't have, if you just you know, if you uh, went through college just you know studying, and that's okay. Add your academic information, but as soon as you gain experience, start replacing those academic uh, uh, items with impact you gener generated from your previous jobs or your from your current job, and be specific as much as possible. Add uh, concrete numbers like help the company generate one million dollars in annual recurring revenue no? so, something like that so there are a lot of other things that you could add to your resume to make it stand out but those are the three of the most effective things that i think that could uh, uh, elevate your resume 
there are a lot of others you could try but uh you could you know also try these so yeah you have uh, this idea already of how to improve your resume but are there tools that can make it a lot easier there are of course so we have here three three ish tools that uh, could help um, make your resume even more effective first is chat gpt so i don't think i need to to discuss what chat gpt is but the way you should use this in improving your resume is don't use it to generate the resume from the start draft a resume yourself first then ask chat chat gpt how you could improve your wording your sentence construction how to lay out you know that's what chat gpt is very good at give it an idea give it the information that uh, you already have and have chat gpt arrange things in a more digestible way secondly um, you could use canva google docs and ms word a few years ago i i had this belief that companies who still require people to submit resumes with the word format are living in 1990 but uh knowing what what ats can do the applicant tr tracking system can do i've changed my mind so canvas kind of fallen out of favor because it can't really generate word files but of course there's google docs uh, that's free and ms word if you have you know uh, a license and you could create your resume through those uh, applications of course you could still use canva for maybe resumes that don't really you don't really need to submit to companies to get jobs like for example if i need to submit a resume for you know someone who who's inviting me to talk and he needs me to submit a resume maybe i could create one from canva instead of submitting something from from microsoft word so it depends on the situation but for for um getting interviews trying to get interviews use google docs and ms word so there's a form certain format that you need to follow so that it would be ats uh, friendly and having said that the this is one of the best i think uh communities in reddit if you're not a member of reddit you should be you no know, and uh, join communities that help each other elevate or help each other grow and one of these uh, communities is our resumes or the resumes subreddit so join here and this is where i learned about ats actually i learned it in prospel but i've learned more about it in the resume subreddit so you could what you could do here is once you join and once, you, once you've created your resume remove all sensitive information be very careful with that don't add anything that could compromise your identity and your privacy have the community members in the resume subreddit give you feedback about your resume and I, I assure you they're 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 very helpful of uh, of course there are some people who are you know uh, very toxic that's a, that's the internet but a lot of them are very help, very helpful and will provide you with insights on how to further improve your resume so having said that yes resumes are still very le relevant in 2023 but like i said earlier it's not it's the least effective way of applying for jobs how i think about this is it's the baseline it's the least that you should be doing submit submitting resumes to companies everyone should be doing this by default but aside from that you should be also trying other ways to get into the companies that you want to be part of so here are three of the many ways you could do that that i think 
could help you get into a company by another door other than the resume. Firstly, and uh, this is very reflective of what I'm doing currently, build an online brand. Market yourself online, create valuable and relevant content, emphasize the impact you can bring to an organization. So, for me, personally, I think an online brand is the new resume. So, yeah, again, submit resumes, that's the bare minimum that you should be doing. But if you could build an online brand, it's going to do you wonders. What's the reason I'm talking in front of you right now? It's because I think I've built an online brand around a certain niche. The niche is, I think, eh, helping people uh, get into tech and build a career in tech. And that's why I get invited to talk in schools and in other uh, online events and even you know, in-person events. And it's helping me a lot. And hopefully, if ever I need to find a crossing, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm, uh, I'm planning to, but if ever I need to find another job, you know, I'm happy with Prospel, okay? <laughs> but if ever, you know, worst comes to worst, I need to find another job. Having this online brand, do you think companies would want me on their team? Or what would want me on their organization? I would like to think that yes. Because, you know, I established that credibility. I established that I bring a lot of value. I elevate people around me. I try to help other people. You know? So that's what online brand is doing. Of course, there's, this is very hard to do. And I'm still struggling myself. Uh, but it's worth doing. And I love what I'm doing. You know, I'm enjoying it. You know? that, that's what's, what's fun about it. It's hard, but it's fun for me. It's not for everyone, okay? I'm, uh, like I said in the early early part of this talk, not everything here is for everyone. So you need to judge for yourself if it applies to you. Number two is be active in relevant communities. So if you want to be a Ruby on Rails in, uh, developer, of course, join a community in Ruby on Rails. Don't just be a member. Help out and volunteer. Show what kind of value you could bring to that organization. Again, impact, 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 right? Then in the process, you will be growing your, ne your network. Growing your network shouldn't be the primary goal. It could be you know, secondary, tertiary goal. But the real goal here is to help other people and to help out, you know, just to create impact, to build your personal value. And lastly, of course, this one is, we are in 2023. If res submitting resumes is the baseline, this is the next thing that you should be always doing. Applying through online platforms like Prospel, LinkedIn, and Jobstreet. So yeah, um, so yeah, you 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 submitted your resume and it's uh, it's gotten your interviews very effective. Everyone is want, wants to interview you, but that's just the first part. This is actually the most crucial stage in the application process, the interview itself. Again, I have a question. And this is in the context of the tech industry, computer science, IT, software development. Is the traditional tech interview broken? Again, I have my thoughts in uh, here and uh, I want to share three insights that I think makes the tech interview broken. Now, the first is it doesn't really reflect the actual day-to-day -day tasks required by the job. I mean, how often would you be doing 
uh, data structures and algorithms on the job. You would argue that there are uh, jobs that actually do that? Yes, but in the vast majority of uh, tech roles, you won't be doing this. You won't be doing uh, or building algorithms. You would be probably be using other or algorithms written by, by other people. So, and you would be doing a lot of Googling yeah? every day, every hour, every day. So the tech interview, the tech exam doesn't really reflect any of that. Second, it's time constrained, pressure packed, and anxiety inducing. Test anxiety is real. And not everyone can handle it uh, gracefully, or a lot of the, a lot of people really stress out when taking examinations. So, does that mean that they are going to be very bad employees? No, it just means that they're bad at taking exams. No, and it doesn't really reflect how well that person will be or how good that person will be as a contributor to a team. And lastly, there's no actual standard. You know? Every company does it differently. Every interview will be different. And even in that same company, person A would be uh, experiencing experience A, but for the same role, person B might be experiencing a whole different experience. So it's going to vary. And it's hard to really prepare for every scenario. But again, there are counterpoints. Companies still need a way to gauge inexperienced applicants. How can we know, you know, if you're if you're fit for the role if we don't do interviews or we don't, you know, test you in some way? Secondly, there's no real economical and more effective alternative yet. There are companies that's that are trying to to change the the application process. I think uh the creator of WordPress is one of the examples that they have this month-long quote-unquote interview process that will have you actually doing or actually contributing the company already. But of course, not companies. And a lot of companies don't have that privilege. They don't have that uh, money. They don't have budget. and they don't, they don't have the resources to do that. So... Automatic, yeah, that's the company. Automatic has a lot of resources, so they can afford to do that. But you know, for most of the companies, they can't. But hopefully, this will change in the future, but uh, I don't think uh, in, uh, in the near term. Third, yeah, interviewing is hard. Tech exams are hard. But interviewing is a skill. It can be grokked. For people who don't know what grokking is, it's about it's more or less learning or hacking, hacking the learning process. So you, this can be developed. Interviewing as a skill can be developed. So don't fret. So again, here, how can we actually grok the interview? Firstly, we need to be comfortable with all kinds of interviews. Like I said earlier, there's a vast ways companies can interview an applicant. It's rare for any two companies to have the same uh, interview process. So the more you expose yourself to all kinds of interviews, the more you will be uh, aware of how companies do things and the more you will be comfortable with any kind of interview that you go that you go to. Again, just apply to as many uh, companies as possible and be, be exposed to as many interviews as possible. Don't be afraid. Because for the second point here, accept that you'd fail 
a lot of interviews. It's one of the things I, that I think you sh- you, people need to unlearn uh, from the academic setting. In the academic setting, failure is somewhat frowned upon, you know? It's, pagkabo magsak ka, it's, it's, you know, you feel down and everything and it, that's understandable because the the basis of uh, one's uh, excellence in the academy is great, right? And doing well in your studies. But in the real world, that doesn't really happen much, you know? There are exceptions, of course. But in general, failure is just a manifestation of you trying. What's worse is not is you not even trying. So try, fail, learn, develop a healthy failure mindset, and start transforming yourself into a growth-driven individual. You grow only by trying. If you're not attempting, you you will be stuck where you are. So attempt, apply for jobs, get interviews, fail them, learn, and then try again. Apply your learnings, which is you know uh, related to the third point. Whenever you fail or whenever you finish an interview, whether you fail or not, or when it, when it, whether you succeed, always ask. Always ask. This is very important. Always ask for feedback after each interview. Ask, ask them what you could improve on, what, what went wrong, or what you did well. You know? And build on top of that so that in the next interview, you'd, you'd patch your, your, your shortcomings or your weaknesses and do better. Iterate. So, yeah. Um, a lot of interviews are you know, kind of robotic. You know, they have this specific set of questions that they ask you. And uh, there are common questions, you know. But if you want to stand out, you need to take control of the conversation. And you need the, the conversation to highlight how much impact you can bring to the company. And if you do that, I assure you, well, most of the time, you would impress your interviewer. So how can you do that? So again, I have three points here that you could, you could follow. First, research. Be sure you understand the company's mission, vision, and values. Think of ways of how you fit into that. So in Prospel, I did this when I applied actually as a part-time. I didn't want to really move in full-time yet at that time because I really wanted to gauge also if Prospel was for me. Um, I looked into their mission. And me, as a as a as an impact driven individual, I want to create impact. I wanted to know, I wanted to feel if Prospel was actually aligned with the impact that I wanted to create. So again, my North Star was to help uh, elevate um, the the tech talent here in the Philippines. And Somehow, Prospel's mission aligned with what I want, what I was doing. So Prospel's mission is to um, actually their north star is to help students get the best start to their career. So it's it kind of aligns with what I'm currently doing, which is trying to get people into tech, you know, and trying to get people into tech and also elevating the tech talent market here in the Philippines. So, it jived. So, during the interviews, I asked questions and my answers also reflected that, hey, you, want, you would want to hire me because this is what I'm currently doing. And it aligns greatly with what you're doing. Of course, the skill set is there. I, uh, there are conversations around the skill set and it matched what they needed. But more than that, I have this passion, this North Star that I want to fulfill and I think 
that greatly aligns with your company and i would do great if you get if you if if you hire me so you know that really um resonated with them and they hired me so second point still related to that imagine scenarios in your head in which you couldn't possibly help the company achieve its north star if you have concrete circumstances experience experience in the past better so again you know imagine how you would look at their uh, their product what they're doing and imagine how you would get in and help out the company achieve its goals and that would manifest in the way you answer the questions so if there's something that's you know like uh again from my experience i've been building communities so i talked about that during our interviews and we found parallels between what the company is doing and what i'm doing on my uh, on my uh, uh, free time so there was great alignment there and yeah it led to my eventual employment full time employment in prospo thirdly and lastly it's not conversation if one if only one person is doing the talking ask questions be genuinely curious extract information that you can build upon this is the the last sentence is very important because you're asking questions so that you could you know uh build around that the, the answer if they are say that they are doing this kind of thing and you think that you could contribute to the to that thing that they're doing that's going to be great because you have fodder to the canon you know canon fodder you could use that as a weapon not really a weapon it's not a war but you use that and leverage that so that you could you know uh, highlight more of the impact that, that you want to create when you join the company so i'm running out of time here but uh, let me just uh, leave you with this quote from i don't know some random internet person <laughs> but success is not measured in the amount of dollars you make but the amount of lives you impact let that sink in because we live in a world that's that's putting too much um emphasis on creating money building wealth but for me building wealth is not the end goal i myself i have aspirations of creating you know wealth for myself but not for the sake of being rich if i want to be rich and that's it that's for me it's kind of empty you know okay you have 100 million dollars already so what you yeah of course you would enjoy that you would buy you know all the all the conveniences in life and luxuries but right after that what now you know for me again um i measure my success with the number of people that i've been helping or i've been impacting so hopefully you know like for this instance i'm doing this uh this talk uh for plm i'm hoping maybe i could impact one or two of you and that for me is really that's where i get my fulfillment you know? like my decision to join prospel i felt that i would impact a lot of students a lot of young people i would help get better careers you know? and that for me again is very fulfilling yeah i'm getting paid a uh, good a good amount of uh, salary but at the end of the day i want that you know that wealth and the 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 opportunities that, that the wealth would be opening up to help other people in the way that i'm trying to do now like here i'm talking in front of you sharing what i know and hopefully i could you know uh, open up 
some ice, a couple of pairs of ice, and maybe follow suit and try to be impact-driven individuals. I promise you, once you become impact-driven, every decision that you make in your life, what company you want to pursue, what kind of organizations you want to be part of, like if you're a content creator, what kind of content you want to bring out to the world, they would be based on the impact that you want to create. So with that, I thank you again for uh, inviting inviting me over to share my thoughts and insights. Um, the slide deck is available available online from this link. Um, and I hope to see you guys around. I'm all over the internet. Uh, if you want to follow me again, at skuyadev.com. And thank you. Thank you, everyone. I hope uh, if you have any questions, again, just reach out to kuyadev.com. I'm kind of busy, but I try to answer either by uh, a TikTok video, a message, or maybe even if it's if a question is deserves a podcast episode, I do that. But yeah, uh, feel free to reach out. Medyo matagal ako sumagot, but <laughs> I do try. So yeah, thank you. And I hope you find value in what I shared right now. And I wish you good luck in your careers. Bye.